pizza is like an open canvas. You put whatever you want on it, and that's it. This is wacky, whacked out pizza at its best. The last five years, they changed how a pepperoni looks now. Honestly, they look like contact lenses. It does. Like, yeah. I'm about to just stick it in my eye right stick now. Right in there. Ah! People are like, oh my gosh, that is not what Jersey's like. They're like, go back to New York City right now. Listen, New York loves its pizza, and they really love to stick to the classics, cheese, margarita, and pep. But with so much international influence from Asia, Latin America, and modern day Italy, you kind of start to wonder, do people want interesting pizza flavors? Should crust be Neapolitan or New York style? And are there any real rules left for pizza? We're going on a massive tour from Manhattan to Jersey with our second generation Sicilian friend, Marco, to see firsthand just how pizza is evolving. Let's go. All right, so for our first spot, we are starting in Hoboken, New Jersey, here at Tony Bologna's, where we're about to see some pizzas that we have never seen before because he is taking a very, very non-traditional route. Marco, how familiar are you with like wacky, funky, out of this world pizzas? Uh, well, for growing up in New York City, obviously, uh, I don't see a lot of pizzas with a lot of like everything thrown on there like I seen in Tony Bologna. In Manhattan, sort of the traditionalist, purist perspective is more enforced, right? Yes, yes. It's 2020, Tony Bologna's is very, very popular. It started in Atlantic City. They got locations in Hoboken and Jersey City. All right, you guys, let's check it out. Tony Bologna's in Jersey. All right, you guys, we're inside Tony Bologna's in Hoboken right now. You guys, they've got 15 different slices. This is not DeFara's. This is not necessarily your traditional. This is wacky, whacked out pizza at its best. Is that kind of like you? That's kind of like <laughs> me. I cannot wait. <clears throat> Tony Bologna's actually got really famous in 2017 for their taco pizza. I believe it's like $80, $90. A lot of people are like $90 for a pizza. Trust me, just, just look at it. It's worth, it's worth $90. I'm gonna get one of each slice, and then we're also probably gonna try like your top three most popular sub sandwiches. At Tony Bologna's, Jersey is getting our business today. All right, you guys, we're here at Tony Bologna's. We gotta get in round one. This is probably the pioneer of the ultra wacky slice. I got the Adios Meals. I'm sorry, I said it wrong, but it's got like chicken, cilantro sauce. It has potato chips on it, white sauce. Ducktown, it has bacon, duck on there, mozzarella cheese. And I've got the K-pop slice, which is a sweet and sour yeah, it's uh, Korean chicken. At Tony Bologna's crazy pizza. Take it only one bite. Not one bite as in like, you know, still president, I'm, I'm serious about the one bite. This slice is probably one of my favorite slices ever. Marco, do I you don't understand know. what you're saying as an Italian, Sicilian this, American? Are you yeah. sure? I'm telling you, this is, ama this is amazing. That is a oh. good slice. It's literally just real duck duck. What I'm amazed is that they gotta cook all these toppings back there, guys. This is like, they're cooking all these different dishes. Oh, With the crema sauce, which is sort of like, you know, your Spanish Latino cream. I don't know, I'm pretty torn between this and the duck down, to be honest. I feel like this might be like, Probably like the healthiest slice that's on the table right now, but I gotta go with Ducktown. All right, we're going you know what? Out of round one, I barely agree with you, but I agree with you. Ducktown for round one. Get the Ducktown. Okay, you guys, round two, we've got the Night in Bangkok. That's a Thai slice. You are looking at a sesame chicken, and Andrew, you're looking at more of a Kung Pao chicken, right? Yes, the General Khan, AKA the General So one. Thai Bangkok slice. This is pretty good. Sesame chicken, very sweet. It's similar. Give me this Thai slice, David. I've been to Bangkok. The Bangkok slice is fire. I haven't tried it yet. No, try no, 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 try it. I'm not, I don't yeah. want to sway your opinion, it. bro. Like, I can tell you straight off the bat, I had all three slices between the General Khan, the sesame chicken, and the Thai Bangkok boardwalk. And the Bangkok boardwalk wins by a mile, man. That was That's delicious. Good. That's a must get here at Tony Bologna's. Round three, guys. This is a round all in and of itself. This is the taco slice here at Tony Bologna's. This is a $90 pie. This is a one slice. Some of these meats are marinated in mezcal. So they really didn't just throw like a whatever taco. Like they, they try to do it up, take it serious. So a lot of the old school Italians would see this and they'd probably be like, what the is this? <laughs> but the new school guys like us, we're into this stuff. And hey, this is something that they actually ship Shit. nationally. Shit. Taco, taco pizza. pizza. There's a science to it. You gotta flap it over it and then just Oh my gosh, wow. That's actually way better than I thought it was. One more bite. Taking only one bite. They mix a taco and pizza, just put it together. That's it. 
that's a slice of cheese pizza with just a taco on top. I know it even looks messy. It even held together better than I thought too. If you're at Tony Bologna's, I have one that is Mexican inspired right here. I have the, the honey chicken Parmesan. And then I got the Frito fried chicken. Crazy subs. This honestly tastes like an elevated chopped cheese. I predict this one wins. Really? This one is really? so good. This one really good. I don't know. All right, the winner of the sub round is the fried chicken Frito, guys. That is a must get here. We are looking at slices that they generally have some version of at traditional either slice pizza shops in the New York tri-state area. Traditional slices. No joke, nothing has been bad and nothing has lacked flavor. So what they were able to do here is actually create some sort of a garlic bread type crust mm. and then put the white slice on top of that. I love an oily slice, all the oil you can see on the plate. I thought this was one of the better chicken parm slices I've had. I got a traditional margarita slice. So over here we have the burrata vodka slice. Here I have the buffalo chicken slice. It tastes different, it's way more basil. That burrata vodka slice is really good and it has a nice kick to it. Last but not least, you guys, we have the mac and the barbecue chicken. That's like a perfect mesh. You know what, no one's ever elevated a mac and slice. The best traditional slice, and I'm sure you guys probably agree with me, was the burrata vodka. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I liked everything, but I felt like the Latino inspired slices were my favorite. I might say that the taco slice is my favorite. I really liked the uh, Olay sandwich. Oh, nice. My favorite slice was definitely the first slice I had was the duck town. My favorite non pizza would be the Frito oh. fried chicken. If you're in this area, go get that sandwich. My favorite slice, I might have to go with the Adios Mios. That was okay. pretty good. Okay. And then my favorite was the, the Frito sandwich. Continuing our modern style of pizza food crawl, we just came from sort of the uh, wacky spot yeah. to some spot that I believe is designed to mimic what they are eating in Naples and Rome in 2020. Wow, so Sicily got left out yet again. <laughs> okay, that's how it is. Veriza, let's go. This is where the magic goes down. It's a brick oven pizza right here. The oven is what makes the pizza the best. Our dough is special because it's double fermented, so it's very easy to digest. So the thing is about our pizza, it's very light. Next up here at Verizza, you guys, we came from something wacky to something that's really trying to recreate Naples. And, and this is something that you kind of have to lift with two hands. It's not gonna be your New York style slice. It's gonna be very, very thin, as you can see. Look at how thin that crust is. Fungi. That's good. Mm. Yeah. I would eat these pizzas growing up and I didn't always like them because I always thought that the slices were a lot smaller. Right now we're in the Parmense, he has tomato sauce, fresh mozzarella, we got arugula, Parmesan shavings in there. And, uh, and and basil as well. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I took a slice and I swear I just took like half the prosciutto. Right Do I have there. to roll it up yes. like this? Well, you know what's actually really funny? We were just at Tony Bologna's talking about how messy the pizza was. Not gonna lie, this pizza actually ends up being kind of messy yeah. too. I like them both at at least a four out of five level, but I might go with the original. Mm. Well, the yeah. Now listen, is it cause it has your last name in it? It has an impact. Marco, as an Italian American, what does it mean, if anything, to be at these like 2020 Naples spots? It's amazing, to be honest. And I love the fact that like from the owner here, he's from Italy and he's bringing a nice modern type of pizza back to the States. And uh, it's really, really simple food but very, very, very good. We started our video at kind of a wacky New York style uh, pizza spot, and then we went to a current modern day Italian pizza spot, and then now we're gonna go get some skateboard pizza. Jersey, let's go. All right, so before we go to our next spot and pizza, they make you order through an app. Input, what do you guys oh, want? Marco, we got. Maverick Meat Lovers, Pepperoni Hot Honey. Maverick? Yeah. Get the Maverick. Well, if it's only $11, I guess I'll get the extra hot too. All right, everybody, we have made it down to Jersey City, New Jersey, and we're outside of a spot called Ann Pizza. They are serving what they call hero pies. Now we call them skateboard pies, but since these are a little smaller, they're almost like tech decks. You can see the Freedom Tower. Just saying, I haven't been here before, okay? <laughs> and pizza is doing pizza very differently. Uh, you can pick your own toppings if you go in an order. I made an order online. Even the, like the ordering boards kind of have like a matrix theme going on. Kind like of a movie, tech yeah. music yeah. festival. Kind of techno-ish, yeah, house. People are like, Gosh, that is not what Jersey's like. Like, go back to New York City right now. They're kind of like a vaporwave Chipotle of pizza. So you can see them, you can uh, order your ingredients. They're gonna grab them from the ingredient trays right in front of you. Like a high-end cafeteria right now, pizza cafeteria. Is this the only make it your own pizza spot? In the area, definitely. We use real organic and non-GMO ingredients. 
Um, so our pies are considered really healthy. So Ann Pizza has only been in the New York market for about like three years. That's the same time Tony Bologna's popped up. I just noticed it. The last three years, that's how you define when something's modern. All right, we got our two pizzas here. We got the American Super Hot Honey, and then we have the Maverick, which is the best seller. Look, they have the little bag of arugula rolled up. Fatigue, yo, yo, fatigue. Fatigue. I, I got you, bro, I got you. <laughs> Pretty different, guys, in terms of the millet that's on the bottom. Spicy pepperoni. I love the breadcrumbs on the, on the crust. That's a good for me. Very sweet. Yeah. It's got honey inside. But this spot is like the highest end fast food pizza spot I've ever had in my life. Yeah. The Maverick. I like this one better. That's one way better. I love the sausage on that. And the green sauce is actually reminds me of a pizza at Ruby Rosa in New York. Very different from the DIY make your own style on the West Coast. Blaze mod pizza primarily. Pyology as well. And honestly, only for like 11 or $12 per pizza. That's not a bad deal. I'm getting the arugula to go. All right, you guys, our next spot is in the Lower East Side. We're in front of Zazzy's. In 2020, so many people are getting in the pizza game, whether they're international or in the case of Zazzy's and an Italian American that's trying to elevate an ancient tradition. The interesting thing about Zazzy's is this location just opened, but they have plans to open up up, up to 12 locations in the next year. So they are trying to blow up. There All right, let's go. check it out. It's a bridge between New York style and Neapolitan style pizza. We use flour imported from Naples, tomatoes imported from Naples. We do a three-day fermentation inside our Pizza Master ovens at 650 degrees, something that really isn't heard of here in New York. Massive crusts, and we still kept the uh, traditional New York-style crispiness to the pizza. All right, you guys, so we're at Zazzy's. It's a very modern concept. They have a whole vegan mozzarella stick menu. Grown up, man. Healthy and Italian food doesn't go together. 10, 15 years ago, you would've never had a vegan meatball, but in today's world, we gotta check it out. Let's go get some slices and we're gonna try them. Continuing our modern pizza crawl, we're at Zazzy's. Like we said, every spot we've been to has pretty much been only open for two years. And some of this, these spots, for example, here at Zazzy's, this has been open for two months. Sicilian, Sicilian with pepperoni. pepperoni. What I like about this slice is that uh, it's a very fluffy, thick dough, but it, it does dissolve and you can chew it up easily. Mm. It's not too thick. The last five years, they changed how a pepperoni looks now. Honestly, they look like contact lenses. It does. Like yeah. I'm about to just stick it in my eye right stick now. Right there ah! we go. That's a white slice, that's a tomato slice that has just a little bit of Parmesan on it, mostly sauce. Let's go. I think the sauce, it really stands out to me here. It's really like fresh and zesty. Last but not least, guys, we got the pep slice. That's the pepperoni slice. This last square slice. That kind of looks like focaccia bread a little bit. You guys, as far as the slices here, as it goes, the pepperoni Sicilian was by far my favorite. We are onto the meatless portion here. They have an entire vegan side of the menu, vegan pepperoni poppers, vegan mozzarella sticks, which oh, is really interesting. I'm you can tell by the crust, it looks different. Vegan calamari, which is actually hearts of palm. And then these are meatless meatballs, but they totally would have fooled me. That does not look like it's vegan at all. Meatless meatballs. The really texture good. I could tell is yeah. a little bit different, but taste-wise, I'm like, man, with all the seasoning and stuff, it's really hard to tell. It tastes pretty much like a regular meatball. Did yeah. you check your grandma? She has senses of a of a cat. She'll know right away. <laughs> all right, these are hearts of palm, guys. I'm a sucker from Galama too. That's good. Best oh vegan calamari I've ever had. Very interesting vegan options at the Italian pizzeria. We're outside of Casio e Vino, which has been here since 2007. The owners are Sicilian, but a lot of the pizza chefs are from Naples. And uh, you know, they're just doing things a little bit differently. They wanted to blend a traditional Naples style pizza with a little bit of the thin crust of New York. Veriza, the spot that we were at earlier in the video, you almost couldn't fold it because the Naples dough is so soft, but this is a little bit crispier, so you can actually fold it like a New York slice. Shrimp pizza, pizza here at Casio e Vino. It tastes different than anything we have. Wow, yeah. that it's is- almost more like a seafood pasta Shrimp yeah. on a pizza. This is like an Italian person whose like parents were born in Italy. Moving on to dessert, we got the Nutella pizza, and Nutella is from Italy. It's kind of like this, what, hazelnut chocolate? It's Nutella right pizza. Let's get it. Almost more crunchy than crispy. Dessert after eating pizza and yeah. some more pizza? Uh, you can't beat it. I actually enjoy how it's like shattering in my mouth right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually kind of cool. You gotta be like Snoop Dogg, guys. Snoop Dogg is constantly reinventing himself. Pizza adaptation. All right, you guys, we have arrived at Artichoke Pizza. Now, they have a crab slice, a artichoke cream sauce slice, and what is this? A vodka slice. What can you tell us about artichoke pizza? All right, so with artichoke pizza, when I was growing up, we only had like regular slices with the pepperoni on it. We didn't really have this whole thing where it was artichoke 
on a pizza yeah. or even crab on a pizza. So I feel I like, like even though that this is started by two very, very New York guys, of course, when they first open, a lot of people were like, what do you want to do? Put imitation crab on pizza? That's weird. Yeah, this is the crab slice. This basically tastes like a crab bisque on a pizza. Artichoke didn't open up in the past three years, but it was sort of the first chain to do different pizzas and be so successful, they open up like, you know, multiple, multiple locations. Right. Okay, you guys take a look at these artichoke slices right here. I think a lot of people in a lot of cities don't have access to this. They're only in New York City, uh, artichoke pizza. This is supposed to be kind of like artichoke dip on pizza, and this crust is double thick. Artichoke, artichoke slice. slice. That does taste like wow. you took a thick breadstick and just dipped it in fettuccine mixed with spinach yeah. dip. Mm. I feel like all their slices here on artichoke are a little bit based off almost like a pasta dip. This is the vodka slice. I need some pasta on that slice right now. Mm. I'm yeah. gonna go with Your the artichoke Your favorite is the artichoke dip. slice. I mean, we're at artichoke pizza, but I'm gonna be different. I love that vodka slice right there. The artichoke slice is pretty heavy, but I'm gonna roll with that. That's the best one here. All right, on to our next spot. One of the coolest things was seeing all types of faces behind the pizza joints. Egyptian, Mexican, Asian, and women too. You know, just groups that you wouldn't typically think of when you imagine pizza shop owners. But that just goes to show you how universal it is and how ingrained pizza is into American life. All right, you guys, just a few years old, Motorino is really interesting because the chefs and the owners are from Italy, but they do experiment with more non-traditional flavors. This crust does look like a pretty traditional Naples style um, with the burnt little bubbles here. It's made in a, in a stone oven back there. This is a Thai sausage. This is a Brussels sprouts and bacon. And last but not least, oh, that shit. is a clam white slice. That clam white slice? That, that's the most famous slice here. Clam, clam slice. slice. Very, very wow. oceanic Very, very clammy. All right, you guys, we are in front of Emmett's. This is the only Chicago style pizzeria that is authentic in the entire island of Manhattan. Manhattan. Yeah, I mean, growing up, I never had Chicago style pizza, so I had to do a lot of research today. Marco, this is sausage, pepper, and onion, authentic Chicago style with extra eggs. If this was a New York style Ooh. pizza right now, that all would have been collapsed. Here we go, guys. That's a, definitely a four out of five out of five for sure. Easy, this easy. Four out of five out of five. Yeah. I mean, a two point five out of five. Sorry, guys. Okay, that's pretty good. That's really that's good, right? <laughs> you know what I noticed though way less tomatoes than the ones in Chicago. As a New Yorker, I enjoy Chicago style pizza. We love grab and go stuff. Pizza, you fold it, you know, your average New York slice, and you can just walk wherever you want. But with this, you kind of have to sit down and not be like me and eat it like this. So this was definitely good in quality, but uh, in terms of the price, man, it is pricey. It's pricey. It, this was yeah. like $35 that's for like why four I slices. That's why I didn't give it a five out of five. You know, that 0.5 was because of the price. This is an incredible and insane amount of mozzarella. Look at that. I can still fold the bottom, so shout out to that. I'm not gonna lie, man. I love New York pizza, and I think overall, it is the best style of pizza. But I gotta say, I, I, I do miss the deep dish. And we used to eat a little bit more deep dish back in Washington and Seattle area. Chicago style pizza here at Emmett's. Another pizza style that has popped up in the last two to five years are the vegan slice and the halal slice. Obviously, vegan being a lifestyle, you know, people have uh, religious things that they can't eat with halal. But both these sort of types of pizza spots were not around when you were growing up. Yeah, growing up, I didn't know what, what that was at all. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and uh, the vegan slice, obviously people have like diet restrictions. I'm excited to try the beef pepperoni because Ooh. no pork. Vegan hang up like, spot. I've never had vegan food before. Uh, never have. All right, we're here at Artistic Pizza. We got two vegan slices. We have a vegan buffalo chicken. That's that not real chicken. Smells Marco. delicious, and you could have fooled me because it does look like real chicken. It's definitely different. The taste is definitely different. It can pass for chicken for sure. The vegan ranch is really, really good. It's very spicy. No meat, all vegan. Vegan cheese and everything. Considering that kind of looked like a garden salad, it was actually pretty tasty. <laughs> all right, on my pizzas, I'm gonna definitely roll with this tomato, onion, and pepper one. I thought it was juicy. I can tell that that vegan cheese is kind of getting stuck in the little crevices of my mouth, but it does taste like cheese. I give it a four out of five, actually, yeah. considering there was no uh, impossible meat on it. Uh, I'm gonna give uh, this a three out of five. I, I like the taste, it was really good, it was really messy. All right, you guys, they have some non-vegan slices here. They got the halal side. So these are gonna be beef pepperonis, Marco, and this is a uh, chicken scallion with ranch on top. To me, right here is a nice New York slice. It's greasy, it's cheesy, it's hot, and it's a wide slice, like an old school classic New York so, slice. Hey, the owners are Bengali, so listen, this is like you know, chicken scallion. This is almost like Dern Chum. Hello slices. slices. The pepperoni is a beef pepperoni, really, really good. I mean, this is the first time that I've ever had a chicken scallion slice. Halal, no marinara, 
strong. To me, I'm a meat eater. It was 135% better than a vegan slice. No shade to vegans though. All right, you guys, we are in a seldom village that we go to, West Village, but we're in front of Emily Restaurant. Their whole goal is to basically be non-traditional, but still high quality. This little pie right here, 25 bucks. Korean chicken wings on pizza. They're doing Detroit style, the version of the Sicilian, but it even has more of that like crispy crust around because in Detroit style, they cook it in this almost like a brownie. In the, okay. Like a mini I, tray. You're, you're having Chicago for the first time. This is the Detroit for the first time. Detroit, Detroit style, style Korean, Korean pie. pie. It's so tasty and just that sauce is amazing. It's really, really good. This is the best Korean style slice I've had in American pizzeria in my life. I second that. All right, you guys, we had to end off here at Gino's Pizza. Marco, this is your neighborhood pizza shop. This is where I grew up practically. I was in here probably more than three, four, five thousand times. Uh, this is, they have a New York old school slice. They haven't changed anything since probably like the 90s. We went on a crawl. We tried over 10 modern pizza spots yeah. that have opened up in the past three years. Very sort of like 2020, 2021 style. Let's check out 1990 style. Yo, let's do it. I know I'm around 13 year, oh, 30 year. There we go, there it is. <laughs> That's baby. it, it's a baby. Yeah. My man Lala watched me grow up eating pizza as a kid and now I'm a old man. All right, you guys, we have arrived with a multi-flavored slice here at Gino's. But how does all the new pizza spots that opened up in New York in the past three years symbolize something larger? It's a really competitive game right now in 2020 with uh, pizza. In the last like five or 10 years, I think with Gino's, it's so unique that they really just care and provide pizza for the neighborhood people. One thing that I noticed with the pepperoni slice, pepperoni in 2020, or the bowl pepperonis, they're still going with the flat pepperonis. I still like myself a fresh canned mushroom slice. I'm going with a sausage slice right now. All right, you guys, we went to so many different pizza spots. Most of them were open within the past three years. Very, very modern concepts. Everything from stuff from Italy, wacky stuff that wasn't even cooked by Italians. My favorite was uh, Scar's Pizza. It has to be. Uh, I love the way it's old school inside in there, and then the pizza is like, reminds me of my childhood. Reminds me of this, but a more elevated slice. For me, I gotta go one with Tony Bologna's because they're just doing some wacky stuff. I love that taco slice. Very expensive, Instagram worthy, but for well deserved. I did like the pizza at Verisa, the Italy, Italy spot. Just opened up by real Italians in the year 2020. That's what they're eating in Italy right now. So I think that I kind of had a soft spot for that Neapolitan stuff. All right, man, what's the future of pizza? If we had to say, for me, I think, this is just what I think, thinner crusts, they can still hold together if they can figure out some sort of formula ratio to get that to happen and way more like multi-ethnic toppings. I just really think that sky's the limit for pizza. And I think we're like just on our way. We just started. So we've come to the end of our journey and we ate a whole lot of pizza. And with this much diversity amongst pizza in New York, it makes sense that this is where pizza is headed in the future. The traditional New York Italian American stuff isn't going away, but you're gonna see more new techniques and flavors that you would have never thought of. Maybe pizza is a blank canvas flatbread, but maybe you should still have a regular cheese slice. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Until next time, we out, peace.